will eat you. I will eat your ass. My children aren't going hungry. I'll do it. I'll drink your blood. And I'm starting to think about having to eat my neighbors. You think I like size it up? I'm gonna haul him up back chain. Chop his ass up, size it up. I'm gonna haul him up back chain. Chop, 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 chop. I will eat your leftist ass. I corn on the cob. I'm ready. I will. song eh? we kill yeah I, I i tried to find a good place to cut it and i was yeah, like no it's gotta run the whole thing because the end bit is is gold matt's just dying in the chat ladies and gentlemen as and monsieurs welcome to a brand new friend or fed the show that quest makes you question your priors it's sort of like uh meet the press but based we have collected some of the, the finest minds on the internet uh together to to ask and possibly even answer one of the most important questions of the day, which is, is Alex Jones a friend or a Fed? Now, if you've been paying attention over the last month, we have been doing a series of uh, conspiracy-based shows. Uh, all of our uh, fine panel members have uh, been on various shows over the past month. Uh, Matt's been talking about pseudo conspiracies with uh, Dave Gronowski and Cooper, uh, Cooper Brooks. We had Buck and his uh, lady Amy on to... Uh, his, our sister. Yes, Amy. It was it Amy or Julie? I'm with Julie. You're with Julie, and we had Amy. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Julie doesn't know about me and Amy, so they're, okay. they're twins, man. It's 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 a wild, wacky world. Uh, it was kind of a throw off show, but it was, I think it still fit into the kind of conspiracy minded uh, month. Uh, talking about the family uh, and the destruction thereof, and of course, Adam Fitzgerald was on with Tommy Sammons, who couldn't make it today. Um, talking about 9-11 and then we of course have Mark Aaron my valiant co-host uh, gentlemen uh, Matt you've been on th these before uh, most notably for the Dave Smith hoo-ha so you kind of know how this works uh, Buck and Adam you're new to the show so let's go around the horn and we'll start with Adam initial first thoughts on, on Alex Jones and then we'll go from there unforgivable reprobate <laughs> what do you really think? Shoot, right <laughs> him. Coming in that hot. Perfect. That was perfect. Uh, he, will, he will eat your ass, though, Adam. Yeah. Just you know, like it's there's a lot uh, of double yeah. entendres in that. In that, I'm a long way up there. I'm six ten, so I, I think he's oh. like five foot five. So, god damn, I had no idea. Are you really six ten? Yes. Wow. Damn. You know, okay, we gotta you, know, you know how you can you know how you can tell. It's it's the shoulder shoulder to chest radio ratio. You can always kind of tell someone's height. From yeah, the, yeah, the I can see to, it now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> like the Undertaker and Kane. Yep. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Okay. Don't fuck with Adam. Uh, Adam, any other you want to expand on that, or you want? Yeah, is that it? Was that the whole? That's your entire opinion. It would take a good hour to explain my vitriol for the man. Well, we have ninety minutes, so we we can. We can go from there. Uh, Buck? I guess I'm... <laughs> this is going to be like <laughs> like a CNN panel or something, but based. Um, I, I I have nothing but good things to say about Alex Jones. Well, not nothing, but, you know, he's messed up a few times here and there. But I, I'm from... I Just, live in just once, really. I mean, pretty massively. I moved to Austin, Texas in 1998. Uh, he was a um, small-time public access figure 
who caught my eye. <clears throat> then he became an FM. We were actually based in Austin. Imagine that. There was an FM talk radio uh, that had multiple conspiracy guys on it <clears throat> before that was really a thing. And Alex was one of them. My friend Jack Blood was one of them. Um, and Alex, so I got into him through that. He introduced me, not officially, but um, via his radio show to Ron Paul, which led to a lot of um, my political journeys through the years. And I've been to probably most of the premieres. He actually used to have movie documentary premieres in Austin, Texas, when hmm. Austin wasn't so crazy. Um, so I've been to see most of them as they premiered most of his documentaries. Um and then once he came out, uh, well, once he was against Obama, that really started putting putting him out of the popular uh, circles in Austin, Texas. Once he came out for Trump, that certainly put the nail in the coffin. Um, and but I've still, you know, I don't pay attention to him as much these days, but uh, I've always thought I've met him in person multiple times. Um, he's got many mutual friends. I've always thought he I he woke me up to a lot of things. So um, I've always enjoyed his stuff. And I, I also realized some of the, what he does is a bit for entertainment uh, at this point. Mm -hmm. When I first started watching him, it was less so, but now that he's got a massive audience, it's, I can tell he's kind of pushing his limits on purpose at this point. Matt. Well, I'm glad that I get to go third here because I came into the conversation just kind of, <clears throat> not really knowing exactly which side of this I, I fell on and finding the conversation very interesting. Like I don't, I don't feel passionately about the man one way or the other. Um, I don't, I guess I've just have never, I've never really invested in him as a completely serious person. So I see him as kind of a guy who, who started off very sincere and then kind of went into character so many times that he got stuck in character and so my sense of him is that there's a sincere guy who's in there, but even the amount of energy it would require to rile up the Alex Jones performance on a, like, a, a, like to do it a single time to think about someone riling themselves up to be able to do that, that consistently that often being, I mean, he like Alex Jones is all the time you see him. He's 150% of Alex Jones. And so it just, I, I can't imagine that that does a person's constitution very good. And mm -hmm. so I get the sense that there's probably going to be a really big crash and burn coming. And it's sort of like, is he going to be able to, is he, well, yeah, that's, yeah. Is he going to be able to pull out of this dive or is he going to basically kill himself into the Alex Jones um, character versus whatever Alex Jones, the person is or was. So that's kind of, that's sort of my read on him and, um, I guess I'm interested to hear your guys' takes as to whether you think he's more likely to, uh, I don't know, dial this into some kind of a, just kind of sail off into the sunset and go peace out the rest of his life. He's done his work. He's performed his character. He can go into retirement. Or is this heading into just the most epic catastrophic explosion of all times? That's tough. I mean, is there is there something more recent that I'm not aware of that's going on with him? Or are you just sort of referring to the general? I know there was the big lawsuit uh, over the uh, I don't know. I don't know how many keywords we want to mention on the show here. We are on YouTube, but there was, you know, the billion dollar what I took trillion as, dollars. Just, no, it's trillion. It, right. Was, was it one point four trillion dollars? <laughs> An unpayable amount intentionally on the table now. It started off hang on i was started, had... like, started off as as i think it started off as 400 million was the initial uh so we're talking about of course alex jones went to court um for making comments about sandy hook uh, i'm sure there'll be a wikipedia youtube link mm. below talking explaining that whole thing because that's what we've been having this entire month with conspiracy month <laughs> every show we could uh, we get the uh and can I, I just, just, just that means uh, you're talking about the good stuff? Yeah. For the podcasters in the room, uh, let me just or anyone who's listening, uh, have David Weiss on your show, and <laughs> if you want the most bizarre <laughs> slew of commentary, get David Weiss on your show. And even if you have your show where I spend the first 15 minutes talking about how I how I'm expecting the most spurgiest comments possible, 
doesn't deter them. <laughs> just, <laughs> just novels, absolute novels of, of commentary on the on the on the shows. And he, then you explain to me like you're only helping us. Like you're just you're just boosting us. Um, yeah, I'm like I'm sitting here taking yeah. notes. Right. I would <laughs> believe. Yeah. I'll gladly just, take that. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. easy. easy Algorithm yeah. fuel. Um, but uh, so uh, we'll get into we'll when you talk more about this. But there was of course the court case uh, where he uh, lost the settlement to the Sandy Hook parents. I, I believe I can call up the ex- exact things, but I think the the initial settlement was something like four hundred million dollars that he owed to a plethora of parents, and then it just kept getting upped. So it went from four hundred million to something some some odd billion. And then they turn around and, and awarded them 1.4. I believe the 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 rate right now is 1.4 trillion dollars that he owes uh, the uh, the Sandy Hook. Okay, someone for. who's watching, Google that and fact check us. Oh, I, I can, can't because the last I, I heard was 1.4 billion. I thought I heard 900 million. That was the number I heard. And then I remember it went into crazy town. But a trillion is a lot of money. I don't know. Yeah, he was just okay. he was just on Oh, hang on. Maybe I maybe I misspoke. 1.5 billion dollars. Yeah, okay. Uh cuz we would have got fact checked again. There was oh, something no. with trillions. There was something that, at some point in the conversation. It might have been 1.5 billion with one family. And then hmm. if you take that or it was there was I remember hearing a number that was just it was like this isn't this isn't a number. Yeah, that a billion settled. dollars. There's nobody's that's going to that, settle. That's this. a that number is a billion. Like who has a billion other than like you know five people? I mean, uh, I could see like a, a billion dollar settlement is, could be pretty reasonable for someone of Alex's of his well, status. He was, he was just on. He was just on. Um, um, what's it called? Uh, oh, what's his name? Um, JBB. Uh, PD podcast. I don't know that the uh, the Armenian guy. Um, he was he was on his podcast a little while Patrick ago. Ben David, thank you. Um, oh, I think it's Sam Tripoli. Uh, so Patrick, uh, he was on that. And he explained the whole the whole thing, and and, and he, he I know he did mention one point four trillion dollars at some point. And what apparently what they what he, Alex said is is how it went down. Is they looked at all the money he's made, especially with his um, supplement company over the last. 10 years and just said, okay, well you, here's your gross revenue. Uh, here's your gross sales. Therefore you're worth X amount of dollars. And then they just magnify that. Right. So they said, well, then you could, if he's made something like $500 million over the last five, 10 years in his, in his, uh, supplement company, therefore you can afford to pay this. And that's not how businesses work. Wow. Obviously, like, even if you, <laughs> like no matter what Alex is doing with that money, it's not like he's, it's not like if you generate $500 million in sales that you have $500 million in the bank. Like that's. Yeah. yeah. So they took his gross revenue and then multiplied it by a billion. As per Alex, <laughs> as per Alex Jones. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it was, it was the commenters of goddess here. The, the family was asking for trillions. They were asking okay. for trillions. Right. And it sounds like the settlement was, it, settlement was in the billions. One point five billion dollars is what I'm reading. Is I guess the 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 uh, the official uh, uh, number. Of course, that's going to get argued out in court and all the rest yeah. of it. But because um, they were saying they're seeking three trillion, that's like that's. I mean, that's more than the GDP of like every. Yeah. That's more than the American GDP, as far as I'm aware. Which is like, yeah, like the trillion. families, the families of the Sandy Hook thing are Israel. Right. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> or India. I think a decade the whole of Israel. Of Patrick support. Bet Davis podcast. They mentioned the GDP of India, and they're like, "Well, that's actually like five times more than the GDP of India." Yeah, with like a billion people there. <laughs> You're putting that on one guy for saying, uh, "Okay, we're on YouTube, so we'll 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 this." And he did really hurt their feelings. Yeah, he said there was a flag on the play, and um, yeah. and and that was uh, that was false, perhaps. Who knows? Um, anyways, uh, where are we going with this? Um, I don't know. Um, I, well, I, oh, you were you were asking. You were basically saying, is there anything else that's been going on apart from the, yeah. the deal with that? And I mean, I don't I don't follow him that closely, but I just every time it's kind of like every time I look in at him and see how things are going, it's kind of like can sort of track the trajectory. Right. And something he said on was it the last 
I think it was like the last time he was on Rogan. So this is probably three years ago or so, two or three years ago. He said he said he said something to Joe about like him feeling like his his health was going to start giving out on him, that he's having heart problems. And and when he said it, you could kind of see that his character dropped, that mm-hmm. this was actually real Alex talking. And he was saying basically that he basically he just poured himself completely into this for so long, so completely that he's running out of steam. And he does. He's basically was like, I, I'm going to kill myself doing this. And so when I heard him say that a few years ago, then all of this that's happening. And then I still see clips of him get posted recent clips where he's doing his whole, like ripping the shirt routine and everything. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't know yeah. what the dude is on, but he's jacking himself up with something that he doesn't yeah, want. I feel at. like I'm going to have a heart attack after like 15 minutes of watching him. Like yeah, so it's it's that's, that's too for the memes. For, me. for the memes, it's like yeah. it's glorious. I love it, but at the same time, like the dude's killing himself. What do you got, Jay? There's <laughs> Exhibit A. <laughs> now, if- so for audio listeners, I just shared a picture of Blair White, uh, transgendered conservative uh, uh, influencer, uh, in a picture grabbing Alex Jones's dick. Uh, above his pants, above his pants. It's you know, it's tasteful <clears throat> in that sense. Um, but just this, uh, this picture isn't real. I I I went to share this one around, and then someone in the comments said that they showed the the edits that have been made, and they oh, really? were. I think they were not. That looks like the real one. I think top middle, right there. Mm. So they they edited her arm over to be. Across his junk. Well, still got Tim Pool. Yeah, I mean, I think, yeah, I think that the the this 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 the still, whole, that whole crew being a part of that crew in that way is exactly the sort of thing I'm talking about. Like, this is not a this is not the behavior of a serious, well adjusted, mid to late forties man. Well, this is also post post divorce post post. Um, uh, uh, lawsuit, right? Um, where he had to start. I, we we actually talked about. I talked to Mark about maybe reaching out and getting uh, Alex Jones on the show at one point when he was like literally showing up on uh, on everything. <laughs> like he didn't have right to be that. He lost. Uh, yeah, you didn't have to be that big of a podcaster to get Alex Jones on. Apparently, <laughs> um, mm. showed up on a cooking show. I don't know. Uh, and uh, he just because he was like just trying to get the brand like just just trying to maintain any kind of uh because he was banned off youtube everything else like that he was uh just you know desperately it was almost like how milo went on that little tour afterwards Mm -hmm. where everything crashed and milo yannapolis had to like show up everywhere uh just to remind people that he still existed and i feel that this turn post and I, i guess maybe we can do that with this with this timeline maybe and adam will get you in on this because there's like Pre Alex Jones, up until the court case, which you know, going from relative unknown to pretty like the the standard bearer, the, the American CEO of conspiracies, he was a the American version of David Icke in many ways. Um, uh, he has that presence, and then then of course the court stuff, and then you have that post court stuff where I feel like he's now become this almost unhinged almost irrelevant figure in many ways like the like uh, the like the internet has moved past him uh mm-hmm. and, his, and and like like you said matt it's sad because i think he will probably just end up killing himself through substance abuse and you know whatever whatever else uh yeah. chasing you know now also having to pay off a one point as far as i know he's, he has no intention of any dollar. of it and i think he, i think he could just like from following the case the amount that i have which is not a, a lot i mean you just appeal the hell out of it and it's never going to go anywhere i don't think he's ever gonna, i don't think he's going to pay a dime and i don't think he should um but i think we could also break up because i mean i'm i'm always trying to remember when was the first time i don't have a history like buck but i've been following alex jones since 9 11 ish like i remember watching him before i was even political or even knew that he was political like it was just kind of truth or stuff and i always really i always really liked the guy since you know i guess i I would about my early late teens early 20s and then i never really saw him much there was infowars would be around it'd be on on youtube you know you'd, you'd pass it here and there 
until kind of the Trump era. And then he blew up. So there, I think there was like sort of the, like three phases. There was like the him early Joe Rogan, like when Joe Rogan used to do conspiracies days where they, you know, do like the moon landing and stuff that I really loved. And there's that Alex Jones too. So I, I think that, yeah, it's, it's hard to really address him without sort of putting him in like uh, circa categories. I don't know if you want you guys want to hit it that way at all, but well, yeah. since you brought up since you brought up nine eleven, Adam, uh, thoughts Let's on there. What, what's your take on yeah. his on his nine eleven? Because he was the guy, as far as I know, he was the first one saying inside job. This isn't this is not what they're telling you on the media. You you you're the expert on this. Was he right or is he controlled opposition there? Well, he was he's right in the general consensus that there was something wrong with the story itself and the lack of the telling of the story, but he led many down a dead end. And that is uh, through his uh, promotion of a film that came out in 2006, which was Loose Change. And Loose Change mm -hmm. actually went down the fringe conspiracy narrative. Now, I think there's two different conspiracies here. You have conspiracy theory that is questioning the narrative or lack thereof by the government itself or the agencies of the federal government. And and you have fringe conspiracy, which I call the irrational theories that bear no factual connection to the to the incident. And when Alex Jones came on the scene, uh, he wasn't alone because at the time there was Jim Fetzer and you had uh, Jeff Rents and uh, you had Gary Allen. Uh, a lot of earlier conspiracy, William Cooper was another. But the problem was, was that all these people already charged the government for the crimes of 9-11 before they even investigated. So they only looked at information that agreed with that or acquiesced to that worldview. And that's disingenuous at best. And a lot of earlier truthers who basically already had a, a hesitation to believe anything in the government narrative, starting with the Y2K virus and, of course, uh, what happened at Waco, which was the, you know, the big conspiracy of all. Um, it already people were starting to question the government and their uh, motives and agendas. But when 9-11 happened, this was a huge event. And all the wrong people started talking about 9-11. And that set the precipice for all the French conspiracy and ruined 9-11 forever. In fact, you look at the general consensus of the public now, and you mention 9-11, automatically there's a hesitation by people saying, eh, or there's a, mm. almost this aura of comedy behind it. To me, that's the real tragedy. The real tragedy of 9-11 is not just what happened on the day itself. It's what happened afterwards. And what happened afterwards was, of course, the government uh, invading Iraq and Afghanistan. But at the same time, the so-called truthers was supposed to be on our side. The fringe aspect of it anyway destroyed any type of uh, having any rational conversation. And the media took uh, went on. They, they interviewed people like Alex Jones. They, they interviewed Jim Fetzer and Morgan Reynolds. And if you don't know who Morgan Reynolds was or John Lear, that's what they interviewed too. Well, they proposed that the planes were holograms. And this is 2005. This is just fresh up 2000, you know, right after, right before loose change and right after 9-11. I mean, they're still, you know, trying to repair what happened at ground zero. And already they're setting the precipice. Look, this is what they think. Anybody who questions the government narrative is already, you know, they're crackpots. They're all nuts. Right. Well, that's what Alex Jones did. Alex Jones is the godfather of most conspiracy theories. Now, I agree with Matt and Buck Johnson here. I, I think at first he started off, you know, innocently. I think he really wanted to question the government narrative. But then afterwards, when fame came, he forgot where he came from. And just all of a sudden, like most people, like Tim Poole and others, you know, you get a thousand, a hundred thousand people, 500,000 people. Now you're talking about money. You're talking about patriot cap. But if you actually just talk about the evidence and the facts, all of a sudden, you're labeled a shill and you're labeled a government agent. And all of a sudden, more than half or three quarters of, your, of the people that are supporting you disappear and they're not paying attention to you anymore. So Alex Jones, what he did after 9-11 was basically question a narrative. But then he promoted Loose Change. And Loose Change is the most popular 9-11 film in the world, even till today. And what happened was Loose Change led you down to the Oh, no planes at the Pentagon. Uh, Shanksville crash is questionable. The hijackers are still alive. Uh, the planes had pods underneath. So that means the planes weren't hijacked or maybe they were and they were swept out. All of this is untrue. All this is speculation and all of it's fantastical. 
And what happened is the real conspiracies involving 9-11, such as an Israeli art student ring, not the ones in the World Trade Center, but over 250 people that were involved that I'm covering now that nobody ever really covers with through the Gerald Shea memorandum. Well, that goes ignored. The Saudis financing, along with the CIA, two hijackers in San Diego, Khalid al-Midar and Awap al knew that they were al-Qaeda, that they were inside the United States, supposedly were at war with al-Qaeda. Well, that's uncovered. No, nobody covers that. Or the uh, the uh, Donald Cannatrail document, the biggest revelation of all, which actually shows that the CIA was running a black operation inside the United States, which you can get the director and the counterterrorism director fired for. Well, nobody covers that. Because why? Because people like Alex Jones and Christopher Bolin and Rebecca Roth and Jason Burmes and dozens and dozens of others went along with the narrative set forth by Alex Jones. And this mm -hmm. is the reason why I'm... I'm you, I'm more critical of Alex Jones than I am with anybody else because of the platform that he has. And he has millions and millions of people. This is the reason why I am a complete uh, disgusted with people like him. And yeah, he may have had um, good intentions at first, but you know, new information comes out, which proves that most of the information that he promoted was false and he still ran with it. Well, that's his fault. But it's not just that. It's that he has to live with the fact that maybe one day he's going to realize what he did and he's basically going to regret that day, but he can't come face to face and say, you know what? I got it wrong, but he's never mm -hmm. done that with nine 11 and he never will because the day that happens is the day that he loses most of his viewership. And they say, aha, he's gotten to, that's why you don't see people like Christopher Bolin anymore or Jason Burmes anymore talking about nine 11. None of these people talk about nine 11 anymore because the information that's coming out now contradicts their previous theories. And why is that? Why don't they just come out and say they got it wrong? You'll gain more respect. It's because of the simple fact that either one, they can't admit that they were wrong or two, they know damn well they do. That's the end of them on viral media because they'll be labeled shills and government agents and lose their followership. So, right. That's okay, so Buck, Buck, I want to get your response, but also I think um, the chat's lighting up. Just a reminder, folks, you can always send us super chats if you want your questions read, read out on air. Send us a super chat, uh, and we will prioritize uh, your questions or comments because uh, we got bills to pay as well. Uh, you can also send us memberships. We have memberships set up. Uh, we will be doing more funky, funky, funky like a monkey, baby, uh, things with the memberships uh, in the next few months. We will let people know. Uh, like, sub sub like, sub, share, do the things, the bells, the whistles. Okay, there's, there's my podcast uh, requirements of the day. Uh, Buck, any co any response on that? Um, and I think we can we can just based on this conversation, what what you laid out, Adam. I think there's a good launching off point into the responsibilities of alt media as well, um, and because we're you know, uh, Buck, Matt obvious to us uh we're in this weird space where we're creating content and the question i think oftentimes comes down to why like why are we doing this thing and why and when we're doing this thing what responsibilities do we have to have and at what point do we have to assume them because there's a difference between when you have 10 followers or you have like a you know you're just starting out and you're just saying stuff uh versus when you actually have a bit of a following versus when you're a famous and there seems to be these tiers and this hierarchy of, of responsibility that 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 maybe was what's unfair with the internet lasting forever is that something that you might say at one tier to get the attention uh whether you're genuine or not whatever i won't we won't ascribe uh, uh um intent you might just say something at, th at this tier that at this tier you regret, but you've already said it. And Ask to Andrew Tate, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, so Buck, if I can, uh, sorry, if I can jump in just before, I'm sure you have something, Buck, but that's my kind of take on it too, is like with the change or not the change, I always saw it as a good thing that at, a, that at someone like Alex Jones was asking questions and encouraging people to ask questions. But then on the flip side of that, to, to uh, Adam's perspective, what if they're pointing you in the direction of the wrong questions? And is that intentional or is that forgivable? I, <clears throat> I don't remember Alex promoting 
loose change. I'm not going to say he didn't do it, but I did. I do remember seeing loose change as it came out um, somewhere. I was at there was a, there used to be a great <clears throat> store in Austin called Brave New Books, which um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with John Bush. <clears throat> now he was a part of that. And they had loose change there. I think it was for free, to be honest. But I saw it and I thought the same thing that Adams. Uh, one of the things I like about Adam is that he points out how ridiculous some of that. Um, you know, there was some sort of the thing with the Pentagon always seemed ridiculous to me. I don't remember Alex ever talking about that. In fact, I remember watching Loose Change and thinking that's weird that they think this is like a, a missile, not a plane or whatever, or a hologram. Um, Alex had never said anything like that. I'm not saying he didn't now. I'm, I've killed a lot of brain cells since then. Um, but I do think he was <clears> – <throat> one of the things that I liked about him is that as a young, let's see, 21 to 26-year-old, he at least pointed me to directions to where I started asking questions on mm -hmm. politics, on war, um, again, directing me towards Ron Paul, directing uh, thousands of people towards Ron Paul. Um well, I that's see. a that's a that's a market in the Fed category if I've ever heard one. Yeah, really. no kidding. Well, <laughs> you're not laying a good case there, Buck. That, yeah, I know, but there's, the, there's layers here, man. The internet you're saying Alex here. Jones made you a libertarian, and you think he's a good guy. <laughs> the internet scene in 2023 is quite a bit more. Um, Show us on the gay frog where the bad man touched you, Buck. Come on. But if to have been. In, in Texas in those years before the internet was really much of a thing that was a little bit of a thing like that was kind of important and it made a lot of people question war at the time that weren't doing it already and it made people like me that were just partying think like maybe the government's lying to us and that was not a common thing he also was the one that first brought to my attention the Waco stuff with his film Waco uh, rules for engagement so I think that sort of thing, just getting people to start questioning what's going on in the late 90s, early 2000s, even right after 9-11, that was not a very common thing to do. In mm -hmm. fact, until maybe Obama came along and became trendy for people to kind of push back against the war. <clears throat> um, well, Daily Show, really. Yeah, Daily Show, especially with their Ron Paul segment. Um, I mean, keep in keep in mind. Sorry, Buck, not to interrupt, but keep in mind, Bill Maher, uh, his first show, yep. politically incorrect, got canceled for uh, for for him saying on live on air that they the weren't terrorists cowards. weren't weren't cowards. Yeah, you can say a lot of things about them, but they weren't cowards, and that you know um, that just, always struck me as somewhat true. It is true. Yeah, like it depends it how you true. define coward, and not to sound like a post. I mean, a postmodern you know relativist, but like, dude. Even if you wanted to kill someone, that'd be the not a way I would do it. You know, it does mm -hmm. take some kind of deranged, sick head or balls or not cowardice. Um, yeah, so I, I I don't have too much even to push back on Adam for. All my my main thought is, uh, as someone who was going along or following along, I should say, with Alex quite closely in those days, I don't ever remember him um, promoting loose change. I'm not saying that he he didn't. I definitely remember he was very against David Ike. For what that's worth um he constantly criticized the lizard people stuff and he's saying kind of what adam's saying about him that he's mm. he's being conspiracy theorists look like crackpots and these yeah but i mean but but that to be fair um then he goes on joe rogan and talks about interdimensional pedophile yeah. demons coming through coming yeah. through trying to, to <laughs> like so and the funny thing is that was saying those aren't that was, real that was a decade <laughs> later which was funny because i heard that show and i was like just 15 years ago, you would have been saying it's nuts to say something like this. Right. But so that, like, yeah, but know. then you get, there's always the continuum, right? And if we're going to talk about someone like this, especially with the question being friend or fed, I think it always comes down to like, A, especially over the past few years, the, what the, 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 whatever it is, the line between a truth seeker, a journalist, a conspiracy theory and theorist and a nut job are really blurred. And trying to say yes. like one where one starts and one ends, that's really tough. So the question with someone like Alex Jones, like anyone, I think all of us to some degree, like Jason was saying, why do we do this? Once you start speaking to people, at what point are you responsible for taking that that desire to think outside of the box and ask questions and say, okay, well, now I got to pull that, you know, toe the mainstream kind of responsible, authoritative line on things without being sort of 
fun and and uh, experimental in my thoughts i ho- i, I kind of hope we never get there because i like the out there stuff but when it comes to someone like uh, alex jones someone who is prominent are they there as a true seeker or are they there as um like a controlled opposition someone who's there to say enough of the questions to get you questioning things but not not the right ones and not or not, just not even like are they there to discredit people who are asking the right questions are they there as a, as a distraction you know what i, I mean like are, yeah I, I from again it's not like he's my buddy but from paying attention over the years i i lean towards more what matt was saying that i think he has a genuine um concern or search for truth I think there's some paranoia probably going on in his mind. There's some going on in mine too. So I'm not knocking him for that, but um, I think he got big enough physically and, 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 and popularity wise that you start to fill your ego a little bit with some outside things. I certainly don't think he's controlled up. Um, You know, well hang on let's let's we'll, hang, we'll, we'll get into that in a second i uh, just uh, just to interrupt you buck uh we'll read out a random username as saying that the best way to have a pe- perfect batting average is to never swing mm-hmm. yeah, i think good point matt i'll get we'll get we'll get you on on this but um just to follow up on that idea that it's one of the things I think that that all of us share in common, and I think the one thing that uh, has united us, especially since the events of 2020, is the truth. I think this is kind of what the underlying, if we're going to go Girardian, the desire for libertarians and many of people who are in part of the uh, conspiracy theory or dissident right or whatever have you, is the truth. Like, give me the truth. When, and when you take that red pill, that Yarvian red pill, and you start to understand that you've been lied to through narratives, that you've been repeating ad nauseum, it makes you sick because you realize that you're you've been part of that problem. Like you've been you have been just saying things that you can't quantify or or prove the flat earth thing, right? I don't know if the earth's flat or a globe. I don't know. Uh and it, on some level I don't care. But you know what I do care about, and this is what happened when when uh when Mark and I had a conversation like years and years ago, uh, where he challenged me on it. And I drunkenly and uh, I was like I was high as well, just like you know, did the you know, defend the globe poked really hard in the forehead. Right. Well, yeah. Um, <laughs> it's not my one of my pride moments, but but uh, but afterwards, you had I I remember that very distinctly. The next day, going, well, wait a minute, how do I know this? Like, how do I know that? Like, how do I know that the, the Earth is round? And I can quote all these things, or I can go on Google. See, it's there. It says it on this. And you're like, yeah, but how do you know? And what if they're wrong? And what if they're lying? And what if what if someone lied in in 1850, and you've just been repeating this lie and parroting it because they told you in school, and you feel like a really smart mark going, oh no, no, right? You know, but you don't know. You don't, mm. don't tell me you understand any of this crap. <laughs> like you're not a physicist, and even the physicist might be might be full of shit. So. So I think it's in, it, it, on one hand, it's, it's, it's seeking truth, truth seeking desires. And, but then there is, then there is the responsibility that is given to us from the outside, from, from, from society and for ourselves that you're challenging someone's reality. And by challenging someone's reality, you are entering into a, into your, your, your screwing with somebody like on a, on a fundamental level. And I think that's part of the reason why the pushback is so spurgy it's not reasonable uh it's it's violent really because you're you're threatening their 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 little t- uh, their little uh a foothold on what they what they would define as reality anyways matt uh any thoughts we'll go from there yeah it's interesting your the the gap kind of between that 15 years that you mentioned buck that you were like 15 years ago he would have been the one telling uh um uh, saying that the the interdimensional pedophile aliens or whatever that and it's kind of like that gap there was like some some at some point in those 15 years is when he went from being Alex Jones to Alex Jones in character like at some point in there he began to lose himself in his character and i think 
we and by lose himself in his character, what I mean is like he's playing a character like as a role and he's losing himself in that role where he no longer dips in and out, but he continues being this fictional character that he's created. Um, it's a very it's a very um, uh, like wrestling type of a, type of a vibe. Mm-hmm. He's kind of like a wrestler yeah, that got persona. stuck in his character. Yeah. And I don't I, as I kind of reason through this, I think about m- me being him, I put myself in his shoes and I think, okay, so I've reached this point, you know, I'm some guy who just kind of enjoys performatively ranting about these things. And I've built up a whole bunch of popularity and now it's starting to get to the point where there's stakes to the things that I talk about. If I'm some nobody that's off here, just kind of shoot my mouth off or whatever, nobody cares about me because I'm nobody. But once I start becoming somebody, then I need to start being more and more careful about what I say and what I don't say. I have to think about it a little more clearly. And I think that would probably reach, I I can imagine him getting to a point where there's this upward pressure of his popularity growing and his notoriety and stuff. That upward pressure is pushing him up, but it's pushing him toward this decision point where he has to say, do I just go balls deep and, and, you know, throw caution to the wind or do I pull back And get selective about this to where essentially pulling back and starting to get selective is trying to maintain his, his, his uh, popularity, trying to maintain his notoriety without maintaining the thing that got him there. That's where he starts getting disingenuous. And it strikes me that he, he confronted a moment like this where he's like, do I just go balls deep or do I sell out and pull back away from it? And he kind of chose to do both where he just kind of, it's like the, the pressure of it sort of broke him in half and he's continuing to go balls deep and saying more and more outlandish things and getting kind of insane. But then he's also being selective in the stuff that he says and focuses on. So Mm -hmm. he's kind of trying to have his cake and eat it too. And I think that's part of what's driving him insane. Well, that's my question is does, does that even necessarily have to, be or speak of intentionality or can it just be kind of temperamental? I mean, when you look at the picture of him with Blair white and, and uh, Tim pool and, you know, like I'm still trying to figure out exactly what circles it is that I run in, but I know it's not quite that one where it's the Dave Rubin, Tim pool. Like I'm probably never going to get on Tim cast, you know, cause I'm so and Alex is in, in that milieu. And is that just the safer one or are they intentionally are there third, you know, yeah, but, so many but third keep, rails that keep them there. Keep in mind, he's only in that, he's only in that milieu because they're using him. Um, yes, I agree. Yeah. He's using right? them and they're using him. Mm-hmm. I mentioned, I mentioned that, uh, I don't know if I finished that story where I was like thinking like, well, may, maybe we can get Alex Jones on because he's doing all these shows. And the thing that stayed my hand on it is like, well, okay. Why would we get Alex Jones on? And the other, well, because Alex Jones, like, yeah, okay, valid, but but why? Like, when you think about getting guests on, you know, oftentimes we defer to uh, to saying we get we oh you got someone that's a good get, you know, right. and and that you also also have to think about the the fans you're bringing on and the heat that you are also bringing on, and it's not saying that you shouldn't, you know. Buck, uh, you know, uh, Alex Jones on on Counterflow would work perfectly. Uh, I think Buck, you you and Alex, the way you stylize your show and the way you do it would be perfect for to get Alex on. It wouldn't work for us necessarily. Um, and the only reason you'd get him on is to get the get, and you get a million, you get all these numbers, and the numbers go up. Oh, look at the numbers, right? right? But what does that mean? It doesn't mean that you're attracting followers. Like we're trying to cultivate, and we've been very successful at doing this. And here's how I'm going to shine the audience shoe, shoes here a little bit. Like I'm so appreciative of people in the chat right now. Our, our generally our comment section is like top notch. We're attracting really, really intelligent, uh, you know, uh, grade A people, and that's what I'm after. If I can get twenty five thousand. Uh, super uh involved intelligent great people that means way more than me to me than 25 million like weirdos or fluff uh or hangers on or people who are just going to show up because they want oh you got oh you got you know alex jones on yeah but what does it mean like what are we going to do with people people that you can sell supplements to right and and it's not that we won't and just in case we ever get alex jones on the, on the show in the future it's not a do, dig yeah but it's it's not a dig it's not it's not an ask it's, it's just a lot of like supplements a, it's, a, it's a question of 
<laughs> it's a question of of why. You know, why do you want that? Um, and I don't think a lot of people ask that question. I th I, I I put forward this idea that the future really of podcasting and at least shows is is more of a humble meta, which is people have been looking at the numbers wrong, and I can understand why. You're following this kind of more TV trend where it's like big numbers good. So the bigger the bigger the number, the better, because uh, that means you're succeeding on some level, yada, yada, yada. And everyone uses it as a cudgel, as a, as a sort of hierarchical tool. But in reality, like a lot of times when you see those million, million plus shows, their content sucks because they've gotten themselves into a box where all they can produce is that box. And I think that's kind of what happened with Alex. So Alex, Jimmy Dore, Young Turks, you can you just run the, run the gambit where they're now they're in their little box and they can't get out of it and they can't change their content or admit that, hey, we got something wrong or, you know, or go yeah. and do something different that's completely off brand without having to change the entire brand. You know, we have two post libertarians in the, in the group. You know, I have massive respect for you and especially Mark Claire. I've said this to Mark Claire many times. It's like one of the reasons uh, I tuned into you guys after you had uh, flipped over because I was never a libertarian. But one of the things that ingratiated so much, uh, that ingratiated you guys to me so much was that you took that risk. Like you took, you took your fan group, your 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 identity as as a as a show, and said, "Matt, you know, I was wrong, or we're shifting," and did your thing. That takes a shit ton of balls. Like, I I don't think people understand once you're once you're involved in this stuff how much balls that takes. Uh, anyways, I'm shining everyone's shoes here. There's no, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I don't know where I'm going. Anyone who want to jump in, Adam. Yeah, Buck, ahead. I'm still trying to get over you PGing your intro song <laughs> personally. I had a you few, got, you have the best intro of all the podcasts ever. And uh, I had a priest uh, like, mention yeah. something about it, and then another priest say, Oh, don't change it. I was stuck <laughs> in the middle. <laughs> I want to know. Adam's so, if you want to, we want to kick it back to Adam. Is is Alex authentic? Like, are because you definitely have some actually hard some some yeah yeah Jay. Adam sent me this on Twitter. We'll play this first, and then we'll kick it over to Adam because I think this is where we'll we'll get into the other part of the conversation because it's apropos as to what's going on in the world today. This is this is young this is young Alex. What I wanted to say is this. I want to say this out in the open. I support the Jewish state of Israel. They have been in that land. That is their land. And it's the UN that has declared them terrorists. The UN has declared that, that, that uh, Israel has been acting uh, wrongly. And the UN supports groups that want to dissolve the state of Israel and make it a marginalized state where we know Jews will not be allowed to stay. The Arabs will run them out of there. I'm not, and, I'm, and I'm not any Arab. Either. Okay, hang on. That was a short clip. Um, Is that the? Yeah, go ahead. Th thoughts? I'm going to find something else to play right after that. But give me two seconds. Are you trying to get me to renounce the entire everything? <laughs> yes, yes, Buck. <laughs> God promised them that land. Hang on, I got a follow. <clears throat> I got a follow up. That's uh, why I need him on my show. Yeah. Uh. <clears throat> You have a clip ready, Jay, or do you want to kick it? No, go, go go talk, Adam. Sorry, Adam, Adam. Go, yeah, talk, and I'll I'll find the other the. And that's uh, surprising. That clip is yeah. nineteen ninety nine, by the way. Um, mm. you know, he once blamed. He once said, as years later, he actually once said that Hollywood was run by Arabs. Um, it's not that I I could say that he's a Fed. I wouldn't make such a damning charge without evidence. I won't be like him and many others like him to just speculate and demonize somebody. I'll demonize him for his for Wait, his. Wait, are you worth a trillion dollars? Well, I, I first of all, I think that's ridiculous. The the price is, uh, you know, the just to go back on that, not to lose the point, but the uh, district court in Houston uh, all, uh, also uh, said that he's not protected under chapter 11 bankruptcy so in other words he can't claim bankruptcy so but he hasn't yet to pay a dime and look here's another thing uh, he has a successful platform it's one of the most successful platforms in viral media if he was actually a threat to the state if he was a threat to anybody 
he would not be as successful as he is today. He never would be. They would have nipped him in the bud many years ago. And the mere fact that a broken clock is right twice a day, and that's what I think of Alex Jones, he may say that this, the government is evil or that the, you know, the Federal Reserve is illegitimate. <laughs> wow, you're really being a ballsy person there. More than three quarters of the world thinks this. But once you start getting into the vague terminologies of Illuminati, New World Order, uh, and all these useless, vague terminologies, he's not being very specific. And there's a reason why. It's because once you're being specific, you're being held accountable for the words you say. And for most right. of the things that he says, it's mostly wrong. So that he'd be held liable, just like what happened with him and Sandy Hook. Didn't think that you know it would come back to him because... It never did in the previous years prior to the Sandy Hook uh, court case. But I don't think he's a Fed. I think that he basically got his head too big for his body, started catering to his audience. And his audience is basically, I'm sorry to say, but not to sound political because I'm not political. I'm against the, the left and right narrative, and I don't think there is one. I think that he caters to the Q Q conspiracy far right crowd because they're the easy manipulate to manipulate. They mm -hmm. believe in all the false theories of 9-11, Sandy Hook, any type of, you know, any type of human event in history, the moon landings and whatnot. Do I think there's conspiracies in some of these things? Absolutely. But not to the extent that JFK is going to come down on the eve of his assassination <laughs> and meet everybody on the grassy knoll. I mean, there are people that believe this. Yeah. It's almost like a religion at this point. I just think that he's, um, he isn't a friend. He isn't a fed. And um, I think that he's um, a problem. And I think the problem is what most people don't realize is that he causes more damage than, say, I think he's on par with the legacy media, that his own audience that trusts him to give him information, to give the public information that uh, that the media can't do. And yet he's not doing it for them. To me, he's a cancer in every way that I think that you know, CNN or Fox is a cancer. Um, and it just that it hurts me because, you know, we know that we can't trust the media, but that mm. there are people out there that trust Alex Jones and Infowars and, you know, all media in general. And I think it's it behooves me to not mention like there's real good people out there that are trying to deliver the truth and facts as is. And, um, you know, he has such a huge platform that. The damage that he causes is irreversible, and that's why I'm such a, a harsh critic of him. But no, I don't think he's fed. I don't have evidence that he is one. It wouldn't surprise me because he has a big platform, but I don't think he is. I just think that, you know, he's just disingenuous. Well, listen, I for part of that was Jason, that, you're when muted. I was, when I described Jason, you're muted. Yeah. When I described him hitting that that fork in the road and kind of going both directions, that's, I think, that's actually a good way of of kind of illustrating that, that he, the whole thing when he gets into stuff about inter inter interdimensional child molesters and uh, the Illuminati, and he starts getting into the stuff that's really outlandish to the average person. I think that's kind of like he's laying down cover fire sort of for everything else. This is kind of the two parts of his brain where the one part of his brain is we have to talk about everything. And the other part of his brain is like, but you don't want to get, you know, you don't want to get taken out. So just get really like elaborate and, and um, goofy about everything. Just make the whole thing a big giant performance. So you're kind of, it's almost like a, like a court jester kind of a performance that means he puts all the stuff out, but it also means he puts out a lot of, a lot of, of fluff that he kind of, well, I think that was, it in. that was his cover for a long time. Uh, yeah. Just, just, uh, just, just, just to make, make to, uh, to, uh, make mention it's like we start mentioning the jays and all of a sudden tommy shows up or i should say the octopuses we should we just mentioned the octopuses and then, <laughs> guys i'm not anti-semitic i'm just autistic that's just my, my thing <laughs> what's well, up thomas alex, to you. alex jones is definitely a friend because he's bill hicks <laughs> right <laughs> i just said in the in the i told jason in the private chat here go look up anyone in the audience you could do this go look up pictures of young alex jones and compare them to pictures of Jay Dyer. Mm. Mm. 
it's not Alex Jones, Bill Hicks level similarity, but there's a very big physiognomy similarity between Jay Dyer and Alex Jones, which is kind of interesting. He also uh, does for the, for the beat. I mean, I know you guys all know this, but he does give um, Jay Dyer, who's I guess the biggest yeah, Jay- Orthodox internet presence. That's not a priest. Um, the fourth hour every Friday. So if it is a massive platform, which I, I suspect it is, um, there's a massive amount of people getting um, at least discussed uh, with them orthodox stuff. So I think that's important. Let's play this clip. Um, hang on. Jeez. I'm a producer, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Pressing buttons. That's what I do. Okay. This. So we played the clip before. That was Al- young Alex Jones talking about the state of Israel. Of course, this is now a more current clip. I, why, why do conservatives who've done nothing to Israel deserve to be persecuted and attacked like Hitler did in the beginning? Deplatforming, putting us in ghettos, lying about us, demonizing us. We can't take the news saying white people are terrorists and Christians are bad people. And you're like, well, we're not doing that. The point is, if you speak out against it, people will listen. My grandfather stood up for the Jews, on both of them almost out of the Army Air Corps. And I don't claim you owe me some debt, but at the same time, I don't owe you anything, and I am tired of being attacked. And the white supremacists make a joke, oh, Jones pleads to his masters. I have been a friend to Israel. I have been nice. But it's time for Jews, particularly, to choose a side. Are you with the West? Are you with right to self-defense? Are you against communism? Or do you embrace those tenets? And if you embrace communism and disarmament and enslavement, then go, then get killed. I'm not the one killing you. Go kill yourself. Take your children with you. I'm sorry you're going to get them killed too. I'm not saying I want your kids killed, but your bizarre behavior is causing this. Let us control our countries and stop them coming here. Hmm. I even kicked off Owen Benjamin for you. (laughs) <laughs> he will well, eat yes, your so, ass juice he will well, eat your liberal <laughs> so this is what i wanted to ask in in contrast to again adam I'm, I'm really glad you're here because it to have someone as a critic i think you possibly have the most valid and and um thoughtful critique yeah so, the chat uh, very the glad chat, for the the chat sounding off on it but i just want to just address the chat for a second it's like look adam adam's dedicated the last what 20 odd years of your life to go to going in deep on 9-11. And I can I can totally understand why why you would be upset with people like Alex Jones and a few others who shoot off the who take a shots off the hip, whose whose general uh synthesis of behavior, and this is what you know uh why I think having post libertarians on the show are, are, are valuable as well, is that when you demonize a state, when the state is always just evil, and that's your scapegoat. And it's always the state evil. You never look at anything else. And it's not that the 9-11 story isn't revealing that the state is evil. It's just that you you create these narratives, these, these wonderful uh, giant narratives that sound sexy and provocative and, and get you tons of views, but end up use can be weaponized by the state to say, look at these, look at these idiots. Like, you know, wh- what are they talking about? Right. Inter- interdimensional pedophile aliens. Like, you know, <laughs> you don't have to, you don't have to talk about that to talk about Pizzagate, you know, like, well, it's like what's his name that always talks about lizard people. Uh, like David, Icke. David Icke. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, but he believes that that's, here's the thing about David Icke is that he's on record saying he actually really believes he was asked by a BBC reporter. Like, he's, they, not they, 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 he's not lying. He's not. I don't think he's lying at all. And, well, and if I you think, actually listen to him, what, you, what he's sorry, saying, I, I'm sorry. I, I just think what he's saying is something analogous. You I don't sorry. think it's. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm a sorry, sorry. No, no, question. I've gone. I've gone deep down into this, and, and no, it's he actually believes that. I mean, <laughs> and it depends how far you want to go. But there are theories that this goes back almost evolutionarily of like you know, where people come from and all that. Like and that chick on the airplane? Are, these bloodlines are ancient. No, I mean, that's who knows. But um, <laughs> uh, that's, it was, it's going to say, like, in, in contrast to Adam's uh, critique, I think that even if even if Alex is the the intentionally or whatever 
um, uh, misdirecting people on some level. He does also platform a lot of people, people who've been on this show that I'm a fan of, who give him a ton of credit. I mean, uh, the show that I'm a huge fan of who hasn't been on the show, Adam Curry, who from No Agenda podcast has been on uh, Infowars a lot. Um, uh, David Weiss, who was just on our show, has been on Infowars. And these are guys, again, who can go a little bit. Jose Jesus, uh, Eddie Bravo. I mean, there's a ton of guys who that I'm a big fan of that Alex platforms. And again, how much they fall into that category of being a little loose lipped. I don't know. That's something I've never really um, taken offense to so much because I, I believe that people should be able to listen with an, a certain amount of. Um, have you noticed, have you noticed, have you noticed though, uh, in one of the things that irritated me about Alex Jones, which is why I never got into his show was when he'll have somebody on, and it, it's one of the kind of guys you're talking about him having on. Mm -hmm. And he seems to try to direct his audience to what he wants them to think what these people are saying means. And it's like, yeah, that's not necessarily what that guy said. Hmm. Have, have you noticed that at all? Am I the only one who's never noticed that? Yeah, you kind of sometimes you'll sit there. I've list, heard, had this happen before. I'm sitting and listening, and he's listening, just talking to someone, and someone's talking for a while, and he's sitting there and nodding, and mm hmm, mm hmm. And then he'll start talking, and it's like your brain was not tracking with whatever they yeah, were saying. He, he's like, So, what you're time. saying is, and he just starts saying stuff, and you're like, That's not what he said at all. Kathy but Newman is a state of mind. I think the person, I think a lot of times too some of these guys are feel like they're out of their depth. And so they're talking to Alex Jones and who's this huge phenomenon, you know, especially since Trump got elected. So it's like, they don't want to get into an argument with him, and like, no, that's not what I meant at all. But he's telling his audience, this is what they mean. And, and, and it's like, that's not what came out of their mouth. That's not what they mm -hmm. said. And I, I, I hear that a lot. And it's, I don't know if it's the way he understands things or if it's the way his brain processes or if he's trying to push his audience in a certain direction. Well, you can kind of really tell by the way, if the way he interacts with Joe Rogan when he's been on there, when they've talked on there and there'll be long stretches of the show where you can tell that Joe is kind of, or yeah, that Joe is kind of like babysitting a gigantic toddler where, where Alex is just, going completely bonkers or even he'll be completely sober, but they'll be talking about something and they just cannot see eye to eye. <clears throat> it's like Alex is like super low empathy or something like that. And yeah, he, he just, does have, he, he doesn't he does connect have, with people. He has a bit of uh, like Ian Crossland to him. I don't know yeah, who that is yeah. from the Tim cast, the guy yeah. with the long hair, who oh, just yeah. like always yeah. comes from such a strange, you're like, that's not even the way anyone would have been looking at this. You're looking at it like <laughs> upside down and backwards. And Alex Jones kind of has that, uh, weird ability, whether it's that he's aloof and doesn't care what they're saying, or he's just looking at it from such a bizarre perspective that it seems, you know, really left field. I'm not sure. It's hard to tell. And I, Let I don't tell you watch guys, him I started enough reading white papers when I was 12 years old. <laughs> that actually sound that like, that I good. thought that was a clip of him for a second. <laughs> the we, have some, we have some song lyrics for you later, Tommy. <laughs> the only person I've seen. Oh, McDonald uh, had a farm. E I E I O. <laughs> the only time I've seen someone keep him on on level and and open, honest, but also quiet at points when he needs to be quiet. Maybe I know this guy's controversial to a lot of people too. But was Malice the interview where he was on Malice's show? And I know Malice is high IQ, so maybe that has something to do with it. And maybe Rogan's not, but. Mal it was the best interview I've ever seen with Alex Jones. He was on point. Malice made didn't allow him to go outside of the line, so to speak, where he can right. jump off. Could corral over. him. Yeah, it was yeah. it was it's the best I've ever seen. What Alex. that what that kind of showed me is that Alex is someone who's very easy to manipulate and corral, <clears throat> which Malice is good at doing to people. <laughs> so right, right. Well, and it showed me that I think it's it goes back to kind of what I was saying that I think Alex was like. He, he got into this with good intentions and he's continuing to be, I guess maybe I would say that I think he's kind of naive and I think, or, that or, his, or he's just used to being handled. Yeah. That, well, yeah. I think he's kind of naive and he's, he kind of just wants to get up here and just talk about the stuff. It and, sounds, you could almost be describing Trump. Right. Yeah. 
Yeah, they're pretty similar. Yeah. yeah. They kind of just have their thing that they want to do. They're like, why don't you guys just leave me alone? Let me do my thing. And just kind of like, whatever. What, what do you need from me? Like, yeah, here, I'll say this thing. Like, just just go away. Let me talk about my thing. So the net the 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 net effect of him is he Handled. says and does a whole lot of really good <laughs> <laughs> perfect. Yeah. yeah. He says and does a lot of really good things, and he says and does a lot of really bad things. So it's like Trump. it's like the criticisms of him are all completely accurate. But then the defenses of him are also all completely accurate as well. He's really Trump like the perfect person for this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, hang on. So there's always the, um, hang on, where is it here? There is the, the classic moment where I think things really turn for him. Uh, let me just read out a random username. Uh, send us $5 on the super chat. Uh, Pre-internet Alex disagrees with modern Alex. Go figure information is a whole new ball game post 20, uh, 2007 the iPhone. I think he was commenting on the two clips. I think the important thing here is <clears throat> well, I think those two clips are uh, are are good um, metric for for him. Is that there's changing your mind, there's grifting, and then there's evolution. Uh, and I think as an audience, it's very difficult to really discern which is which sometimes, because sometimes obviously you have certain people who will change, like give a Dave Rubin who changes flavor like more than Baskin Robbins right like it's whatever whatever gets him views or or interest and maybe he's being 100% authentic on some level I highly doubt it but fine right I I, I would I would put him more in, into a potential grift category than maybe Alex who who I do think is who's evolving as we all do you know if you look at if you were if you were to uh you know, put my thoughts from 10 years ago against my thoughts now, mm -hmm. they're asymmetrical. <laughs> like, it's almost two different human beings. Uh, and that's fine. That's fair. Uh, as long as there's something principled underneath that. And that's the kind of, I think that's the hard one to get at. That's where you start making assumptions and that's where your biases start showing. Because either if you like him, then you think, well, he's, he is a principled actor. He's just... Um, He's just uh sorry, I'm just reading Buck, Buck's private <laughs> private chat here. Clint Loglifter, I don't know. I I left the conversation for a second, so I'm not sure. <laughs> but uh, Clint Russell, super fan of the show. Uh, we should have him on sometime. Um, but <laughs> but you're really missing evolution me. is good. You're never gonna get old. And we're gonna get old, man. <laughs> it's just Until he unblocks it's, me. Anyway. Freaking perennial. Uh, even when, even if he unblocks you, it just gets even funnier. I'm just gonna spam. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, here's where I think, honestly, the worm turned. Do you guys remember this moment? Mm -hmm. Republicans are acting like it isn't happening. Uh, let me just set this up. This is uh, Marco Rubio was doing a press conference, and Alex Jones showed up and crashed his uh, his uh, his press uh, conference. Uh, and this was, this was before the Sandy Hook, everything kicked off of that. Uh, and it seemed to be like, I remember this happened and then all of a sudden all the bad things started happening to Alex. I'm like, Hmm, well, maybe just maybe it's weird. Man. Oh yeah. It's really uh, weird. There's no purge of conservatives. I'm not really no shadow banning. Who, who uh, are you, uh, are you uh, concerned about Congress? bias in social media? Yeah, who's this huh? guy? Are you concer concerned about bias in social media? Well, I think the bigger bias is against freedom of expression. Everybody should be. There's a. There's a. Look, I, I support here. going it's after. It's here, but you said I don't exist. Is that a heckler or a press yeah. gaggle? Look at this guy. The, He's <laughs> saying that I don't exist, and they're. I just don't know who you are, man. I don't read your yeah, websites. Sure, and they demonize me in these very hearings, and then he plays dumb. Infowars.com. You, you know what it is. Does, well. does Google, does Facebook, does that's why you get elected. Do they need to be regulated like like? Do, do they need to be regulated? Marco Rubio, snake. <laughs> 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 this is a dumb boy here. All right, man. Yeah. yeah. Well, who are you? Yeah, who yeah, is sure. this guy? I swear to God, I don't yeah, you know better who hope you are, man. Platform me. Tens of millions of views. Infowars. Bigger than Rush Limbaugh. He knows who Infowars is. Playing this joke over here. That's why the deplatforming didn't work. But 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 here's here's the question. Here's a question. Don't touch me again, man. I'm asking you not to touch me. Well, sure, I'll just pat at you nicely. I know, but I don't want to be, I don't know you, you, man. I don't know who you are. It's not just good You're not going to get arrested, amendment. man. You're it's not going to get arrested. I'll take care of myself. Oh, oh, he'll beat me up. <laughs> 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 Jeremy just could he just could not win in that interaction. No. Dude, if you were going to take care of it by yourself, you had already taken care of it. Let's come on, man. No. 
Let's go. You're turning the freaking right frogs right gay. Out. Right out, damn it. Right out. Right. I'll eat your liberal <laughs> ass. <laughs> Rubio's just like, dude, fuck off. I'm just trying to talk here. <laughs> and yet, and yet, Rubio came off way worse. Uh, Rubio's <laughs> like, I just want to look smug enough so some chick wants to fuck oh. me later. Here's yeah. here's the most smug face in the world. Like, <laughs> remember when, whatever happened to Mark Rubio? Just as an aside, look, look at that face. <laughs> yeah, just caught. Dear caught a shit eating across. grin. Yeah. And his comment with "I don't know who you are" is very telling. That it's this little club that gets a, a, in and allowed to interview these people, and this other guy is not in the club. I don't know who you mm-hmm. are, but like. So why do you get to ask me a question? I, I found that yeah. telling. Do you think he actually didn't know who he was, or that's like that, that's a that's a a slur think, in his? He's like no, saying it. Like, I don't, he's like I don't know who you are. I don't read Infowars.com. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, because yeah, because if, if <laughs> he, Rubio, yeah, he even said like, I don't read your little slash, website, like slash Marco Rubio. Yeah, because their go to in Washington <clears> when they get caught giving the hand job to their boyfriend in a movie theater is, don't you know who I am? <laughs> what? Yeah, a drunken chrome face. You're the VIP uh, of the glory hole, man. You're here every week. What are you talking about? <laughs> hey, don't talk about. Uh, I've uh, got a white stance. You're the you're the reason why we put the footrest in. <laughs> Lobby for that. It cost fifty thousand dollars of taxpayer money for the nice little footrest right by the glory. Trannies hole. fucks like a man, feels like a woman. <laughs> <laughs> It should be the new Ford ad. <laughs> that should be that should be the ad for for that that Blair White's fucking YouTube channel. <laughs> uh, all right, where are we at? I have no idea. Uh, <laughs> I think we were yeah, talking we about. The, uh, I think we were watch, talking we talk about, about Alex Jones watching tranny porn. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, we have the photos. Um, <clears throat> wasn't that a legitimate scandal? Didn't yeah, he? I believe it's not disputed. Yeah, it was a thing that he never addressed. It was just, it came and went, but he never addressed it. Well, who came and went? <laughs> Blair White. That's the question. Oh. <laughs> so maybe the, fi- maybe the picture wasn't doctored. <laughs> Do we do a uh, roundup, final thoughts? But doesn't anyone have a is anyone have a hard hard out? We can go for a little bit longer. If we want to get into weird stuff, we can get into weird stuff. Um, but it's up to, uh, up to the panel at this point. I'm good. I'll, I'll sit here and listen to Adam all night. <laughs> I think that I they're the Adam's like I'm kind of an interesting. I don't know what the fuck y'all are talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Friend or Fed, my friend. It has an adjustment period. <laughs> This is why they. This is why this show will never be will never be repeated because it, it's like it's it, it's it's not repeatable. It's it's it's, it's a so moment. Tell me, in time. you have to keep a torture, don't you? Uh, well, I mean, depends. <laughs> <laughs> it depends on how much they pay me. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's my big credit. Look, the, the criticism about me is that I'm um, too cut and dry. Is there's no joy? You know, it's like joyless sex, right? And so you. <laughs> In other words, um, just a, like a data processor. That's what I would consider myself as. Is just somebody who's monotone and, and doesn't need to uh, sexy up the uh, the information. But I think that's the problem. Is that in this day and age, especially with the advent of viral media and fast technology, where information is is immediate. Problem is, is that we have way too many personalities, and far too less of people that just are messengers of information and mm-hmm. when i first started studying 9-11 back in 2005 uh i i saw this rise of fanaticism within 9-11 and i was shocked i remember being so naive when even coming into viral media do they really think planes were hollywood they, people can't be that stupid but once i found out that dude it wasn't a plane it was a missile dude i became dude. a 9 nihilist to the point where it was I was a like, bird yeah it was a I, I hate, no it was I, superman I, I grew to hate these people and i think that it became a personal vendetta of mine to basically try to write this ship and that was delusional 
because I'm such a small channel. I'm shocked when someone like Buck Johnson actually knows who I am. I'm like, you heard of me? So I'm, I'm really shocked when people say they heard of me only because the reason why I'm not so popular is one, I came late to the game on viral media. And two, I'm not a sensationalist. I give the information as is. I don't report without bias. I, I report without bias, without prejudice. And I make sure to end my videos that way because I think with with people like Alex Jones out there, what good is information, especially conspiratorial information, if you can't act on it? If you could believe whatever you want, belief is a paralyzation of the mind. You could believe the planes were holograms. You could believe that the World Trade Center came down by a nuclear device. You can believe that George Bush knew about 9-11. Do you know it? Can you go to court and provide the information to the judge and a jury and say, this is what happened. We have the information and evidence. No, you can't. That's why you don't see these people in court. You see them on the other end of the court. Mm -hmm. But for the few and far between the people like maybe, say, Robbie Martin or G.J. Thermodedner or Paul Thompson and Kevin Fenton, Ryan Dawson, you know, these people, they're the, the real crime of 9-11 is that there are a few people like this, and I can name them on my hand. But I could give you dozens and dozens and dozens of people just like Alex Jones who basically will just say whatever you want to hear. But I'll tell you what you don't want to hear. And if the information shows it goes one way and not the other, well, too damn bad. That's the evidence. And that's the yeah. facts. All I am is basically a data processor and investigator. I don't do any of the necessary, you know, wild speculation. I don't need to because my ultimate goal is this. I want to inform the public responsibly. I want to give them tangible information, information that they could use, that they can feel in their hand. I don't want them to believe anything because belief puts you in a state of paralysis. You know, there's a favorite quote of mine, and I sound like a broken record when I say it. It's called On Belief Versus Knowledge. It was written by a JFK researcher named E. Martin Schatz, who was a forensic psychologist, who gave it, who said basically this. The problem with the American people is they're allowed to believe anything, but to know nothing know nothing of significance, that is. And that's because the government won't give you anything. There's a war on two fronts. There's a war for information through the National Archives and the government and a war against disinformation. And that's the war that takes up your time. And for people like your show, you, you guys in the chat, is that you're up against a mountain and a molehill against two fronts. One is a good fight, fight for information. And one's a fight against disinformation. And that takes up all your time. And for those who don't have much time, well, there you go. It's a wasted war. But that's what we're up against. That's why would I'm you, so critical of Alex Jones and people like him. Well, this Adam, is why. You, this is Adam, why Adam, I'm, sorry, Tommy. Would you would you say that there's a war on for your mind? Yeah, and I, I this is a great question, had, by the way. I had it. I had it. I, had I just made the same. I made I the same conversation with Patrick McFarlane, <laughs> and we talked I, about psychological operations. And we, it was a three-hour conversation. It was great. But, yeah, there's a war for your mind. I had to do it. I, I just I, Sorry, I had to do it. Uh, sorry, Tommy, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, this is why I've had Adam on my show uh, talking about 9-11 like 11 times, and I've never talked to anybody else about it, is because he doesn't get it caught up in all the bullshit, right? And if any of us on this panel have anything to lose by Alex Jones being misinformation, it's Adam. He's the one who's covering these these topics that Alex Jones is is feeding this bullshit into, and he's he and he has such a reach, and he's able to trickle out these seeds of misinformation into the public, whereas someone like Adam can't even get a foothold, and it, it affects him because he's like, I've done twenty years on one subject, just one well, subject just I've been I've been interested in, and to hear somebody like Alex Jones just flippantly just pass it off like, oh, well, blah, 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 you know, Bush knew, you know, and it's like, all right, but what do you know about it? Like, what have you looked into? What have you actually investigated? How how much time have you spent talking about it and, and researching it and interviewing, you know, CIA, uh, former CIA, you know, operatives, et cetera, et cetera, and, and been really, truly invested in that one topic? And that's not what Alex Jones does. So I can understand why Adam would get like frustrated 
by somebody like Alex Jones. Adam, I know you have a hard out. I, I'll keep you guys around for a little bit longer if we can. Uh, but I, I know Adam has a hard out. Adam, drop your bomb again because uh, you dropped it on Tommy's show and then you dropped it again on our show when we had you on for, with Tommy for 9-11. And I want you to reiterate to the crowd here just in case anyone has caught those two shows. Um, there was information just 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 released in the last... Uh, forgive me about timelines. I have a toddler, so time like is... like in February of this year, I think it was. Yeah, time means nothing to me anymore. <laughs> but, but recently, um, some documents got dropped that you believe are is is critical to understanding 9 11 once you reiterate that again and then i if we can keep your keep everyone else around for a little bit longer i'd like to get into narratives and narrative structure i don't know if uh, anyone else needs to needs to bail out um but uh we'll keep getting out yeah yeah it was it was the donald canastrello document and actually donald canastrello is part of the Mil office of military commissions and in 2016 he was tasked to investigate uh, the Saudi and CIA angle involving two Al Qaeda operatives inside the United States, and whether Saudi Arabia had a um, a financial uh, tie to these two hijackers, and it was there was a lot of questions even before that. FBI investigated it with pen bomb investigation, and then later up a follow up to Operation Encore. But Canastro actually went on the record and interviewed many people from the Nine Limit Commission, the CIA, and the FBI. And these are the people that were told that they went on anonymous, anonymously uh, and basically said this. They said, yeah, we saw the classified information that's not made to the public. And what they found out is this, is that the CIA was running a illegal uh, covert operation inside the United States that was also tasked to the Saudi intelligence arm called the General Intelligence Directorate, or in Arabic, the Mahabeth. And it was headed by um, Prince Turkey Al Faisal. But at the time, there was a connection to the Saudi government. And it came from the Saudi Ministry of Affairs called Muasad al Jara, who hired uh, a couple of people like Fahad al Tamari and Omar al Bayoumi to monitor and to assist two known Al Qaeda operatives inside the United States. And they didn't knew they were coming. And they were coming from an Al-Qaeda summit meeting in Malaysia, where Khalid al-Midar, Nawaf al-Hazmi, Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, Ramzi bin al-Sheib, Ridda Winnes Mudin, called Hambali. These were all the leading terrorists around the world in Southeast Asia and the Middle East. And the CIA were monitoring this, this, uh, this, opera, uh, this meeting. And they knew they were coming to the United States because they found their passports, knew that they had dual U.S. visas, and they knew they were coming to the United States. They told the FBI not to share this information. And the FBI couldn't by law because it's CIA information. And what did the CIA do? So when they came to the United States, they knew about them. They traveled all around inside the United States. More of the 9-11 operators came to the United States, all well within the intelligence arm of the Saudis, the, the Israelis, and the CIA and the NSA. And Kenneth Joe interviewed so many people within the counterterrorism unit at the CIA. And basically some of them who... I guess had questions about whether this should have been shared. Basically, when a record said, yes, we were monitoring these two people. And that that means that the CIA is on record saying that they were running an illegal operation inside the United States. Who covered it? Nobody. In fact, the first viral, uh, I guess, viral media arm was NorthJersey.com and Florida Bulldog. Nobody else. And I ran to the computer when I read this. I, I couldn't believe what I was reading from this document. I said, this is it. Everybody, if you want to blame the CIA, this, here we go. Now we can hold the, the, the director, George Tennant, the counterterrorism director, Kofa Black, the head of the, the, the deputy director of the Alex station, which is the Bin Laden issue station, Tom Wilshire. Oh, my God. We can hold the, the hierarchy involved with this operation. Guess what? Nobody covered it. Not all media. Gray Zone basically was probably the only one. Um, legacy media, predictably, yeah, they covered it a little bit, but nobody held a second. I, I couldn't believe it. And I, Adam, I, right, I just just it. just to cut in, who did you who did you reach out to contact to 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 uh, talk about this? Because you reached out to a few to a few prominent names, not to throw anyone under the bus, because because we don't know what their uh, vetting process is. But who did you reach out to to talk about this? 
I reached out to Human Resources, the CNN, Fox News, OAN, uh, Dave Smith, Jimmy Dore, uh, Abby Martin, uh, The Empire Files, um, uh, even Tim Pool, and I. And what was your response? Nothing. I didn't even get a response back, and I showed and I gave them the documents page by. I even broke it down page by page and gave it to them. And here's and here's a critical part about this, because now we're getting reports of CNN and other reporters being embedded in Hamas who knew about the attacks coming up on, on in, in October, right? This now this is the hotbed news report uh, that Netanyahu and the Israeli state and everyone was reacting to that there were there there were people embedded in 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 Hamas for the just the, the attacks that just happened uh, recently that knew about the attacks and 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 withheld it and withheld it until the, until it broke and no one's taking any responsibility for this this is this is why we have to get things right it's not just enough to ask questions and to point fingers and to and to and to investigate and to open people's minds but we have to get things right because if not we repeat the same mistakes the the thumbnail for uh for the 911 conversation we had with, with Adam and, and Tommy was uh remind me uh Mark you, you made the thumbnail it was like uh it was never a, learn never learn it's 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 never, never forget. forget yeah yeah um because that seems to be the this this the the way the west is collapsing seems to be we're caught in this cycle of memetic of, of, of a negative memetic uh, idiocy which is playing the same games over and over and over again and people are dying mm -hmm. and it's leading to tragic events the ukraine war you know like well, i remember seeing a, a documentary about gore vidal uh way back and it was called the united states of amnesia right and it was somewhat about different topics but they were right on with that point it was like literally you can't even go back 10 years and it, and like just people don't remember and we just do the same we're stuck in these these yeah mimetic loops and uh, which is weird because you think so many people would have been gung-ho to go with um the cia corruption right should be a popular topic uh why it's being ignored i don't know it shocks me because we're not talking about one person here. We're talking about the, 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 the DCI, the Director of Central Intelligence. We're talking about the Director of Operations, James Pavitt. We're talking about the Director of the Counterterrorism Center. We're talking about the biggest names in the intelligence for the most shadowy organization on the earth, one of them anyway. And nobody covers this, even though the, I was shocked that even the you know fringe conspiracy theorists didn't cover this. And when they did, people like Stu Peters, who basically did cover it, he got it wrong still. And it just it, su it just surprised me because all these people have come out and said, well, we got to hold people accountable. We got to hold the CIA accountable for certain crimes. Well, here you have it. And it, it's, it's it's not even uh, speculation. It's Here it is. Evidence. Yeah, but when, so, when you're presented, when, and I think this is the biggest thing, right? Adam has alluded to this before. Is that you're, when you challenge people's reality, uh, it's all good. It's all fine and good in theory. But when it gets down to practicality, it's very, very threatening. It's very violent. It's a violent action that you're taking upon someone. It's 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 violating the nap for the libertarians in the crowd, right? It's the most. It's I I saw it in real time uh, with a with a. That's actually really mm -hmm. funny in more than one way because you violate the nap by waking them up, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> That's no, really but it, but but it's true because like, I I had this conversation in my kitchen with someone who got almost violent with me over the Ukraine war, where I was very saying very very calmly, telling them how this is isn't going to work out, and this is like a year and a half ago, uh, and now it's it's everything that I said. And I'm not some big oracle. I'm not trying to shine my own shoes here. It's just, it's more like I saw things clearly and I'm trying to explain to them. It's like, look, you're, what you're describing doesn't fit into reality. Cause I've been, I've been following this for 25 years. Like I know Putin, I know how he acts. I know how he does things. I, I followed the Crimean, I followed the, the Chechen war. I followed all those things to say that he's suddenly acting out, out of that, that now you're talking about Bill Putin who's doing Bill Putin things doesn't may works in that format, works in that narrative, 
but doesn't work in the in the narrative of reality. Like I know what what Vladimir Putin does, <laughs> and, and he doesn't do that shit. He just doesn't. It's not. Right. You're describing an unreality, and you're 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 convinced yourself of that unreality because you because you want to believe in this thing, and you can examine all your reasons for that. But <clears throat> but but when you're telling me when when you're literally telling me that something that I know isn't true that's where the the propaganda really hits you it's it's where it's i think where you wake people up almost as you hit their their area of, of expertise and maybe that's to answer the question of why do we do this is pre- present enough information and and narratives out there counter narratives out there to people so that they have a bit of armament so when they get presented with an obviously false narrative they have a little bit of something at least a little bit of something to go oh wait a minute that doesn't pass a sniff test. I know that's bullshit. Do you yeah. think? Do you think a lot of it also is just down to media being what media is? I know, even you know, I had a lot of hopes in the alternative media, but at the same time, uh, I always feel that that stress to like make it entertaining, make it a soundbite, make it concise. You know, and and when Adam's going off, I'm like, this is really interesting. But even I have trouble like paying attention, following along because it's not that guy bad. It's not. Oh, you know, like it's 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 that's yeah, not. But you're, it's, you're, but you're the, pre- but you're the pretty one. But you're the pretty one. You're not supposed <laughs> well, to. I'm, the, I'm the every man, right? It's so, a lot more. It's a lot more nuanced and complicated than people want us to believe. Well, right? Like, we're that, supposed that, to have like get eyeballs. It's supposed hey, wait, to be, wait, 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 wait. Hang on a second. Hang on a second. I know Buck got his notepad out, so let's let's hear from Buck. <laughs> no, I, I I was just thinking. I want to hear from Matt real quick because I know he was about to say something. Um, oh, Matt. Yeah. I was I was going to say, Adam, it's interesting. The people that you reached out to and offered this or a, a large number of the people that you reached out to and, and offered this story to have built entire careers out of um, publicly expressing outrage at other people for not holding powerful people accountable. But when they were given an opportunity to hold powerful people accountable, they were like, sorry, I'm good. And, thank the shit. and it may. And it may have been that they simply were like, I don't know this guy. I don't know how to vet this information. I don't want to be the one who goes out. But that's how it works. That's exactly yeah, but, how but this sort on, of thing works. On, nobody I, wants I to take call, this risk. I agree with you, I I agree with you Matt, but like nobody, that. like not one. Like I, I, I can I can get behind CNN, Fox News, like major major networks not doing that. Even Dave, like Dave Smith, he's busy. Wh- yeah, whatever, where's right? Glenn Greenwald? And, and 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 Scott Horton didn't tell him that, so he's he's ignoring it. But but like what? Jimmy Dore, Tim Pool, like all these other guys who sh- who Martin, should definitely have Adam on the Abby show. Martin. Mm-hmm. Like, come on! At some right. point, you're like, none of you, like not one. What, like, it should be one, right? Like one, and it, it and it, and it could be that they're they're passing on this out of negligence because they just are like, this seems I have no way to vet this, and I don't want it to go out there with some harebrained thing because it'll make me look silly if I get it wrong and all this, and so they for whatever reason that if whether they're passing on it for that reason or because they're like, uh, but, 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 if but that's have true, I'm going to get in trouble. Or in either case, is it because there's just in either too, case, it's, is it because there's too much stuck to the 9-11 now like you can't even broach the topic without people just there, dismissing you in, out of in any of those cases what i'm there saying is people, that they are doing the same th- they're suddenly realizing that's the thing this that the this thing that they've criticized everyone else for when they actually confront that situation themselves oh wait a second this is actually a lot harder than it seemed when i was sitting over your armchair quarterback right <laughs> mm. which i'm is, just which gonna is, say there is, are people that that i know adam has interviewed that has not given interviews to any of those other people that that have in, internal knowledge of what was going on at that time and i know that for a fact like he's interviewed some of the hardest interviews to get he's gotten them mm. because of the way he conducts himself and the the way that he releases information like I, just just to throw jimmy door into the bus um i can't <laughs> I just I just tried listening to him and what Kurt Metzger talk about the Ukrainian war, where they're taking some sort of weird sick victory lap. They're like we were right and ma- making jokes and and it's like five hundred thousand people have died, uh, uh, somewhere in the in the neighborhood of ten million people displaced. The country's destroyed. It's done. It's finished. And I, I get it. 
right? Like uh, we've been saying this on the show too, and like and maybe it's it's a, it's a little it's a little personal for me. Uh, I I get I get my 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 rancor up, but at the same time, it's like yeah, okay, great, man. But you talked about it. What'd you do? Like, wh- what did you do? Like, what did you, what, what did you follow along? All you did, all you, all you, the position you took was, well, America's involved in it. So America, America bad. So therefore uh, war bad. That was, that was the, 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 uh, the, the, the big brain galaxy take of Jimmy Dore. You and, got a whole bunch of people to think that this thing that you had no impact on was bad. Yeah. And to, and to give him credit, um, sorry, we just lost Adam. I know Adam had a, had a heart out. So, uh, thank you, Adam, for coming on. We'll, uh, we'll follow up with him later. Um, I think he was tired of being the subject. He's like, this was supposed to be about Alex Jones. Damn it. Oh, no, he's back. <laughs> Is he back? <laughs> sorry, Adam. I know you have a heart out. We'll, we'll get you. We'll, we'll let you, uh, say no, your, your goodbyes can, and, I and, and um, I Let's see. do Adam's greatest hits. Let's talk about the phone, Adam. Hang on. Um, but just getting, I think we'll get into narratives to do a, to do an offshoot on that. It's it's most of what we do and most of what what we're, we're being confronted with are these narrative structures. The the war for your mind uh, to tie back to Alex Jones is that narrative structure. Interesting stories. the The Bible is 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 a series of stories for a reason because stories shape our mind, are easy rem- rem- uh, uh, rememberable, can shape entire co- uh, conversations and societies. Um, where am I trying to get with this? I want to throw this over to Buck. Um, let's talk about um, about narrative control and dismantling that because I think that's kind of what conspiracies do is they throw a monkey wrench into the story where you have this kind of preset idea of what things are and then someone's offering you an alternative. And the alternative, whether it's right or wrong, I think right and wrong is almost the wrong way of thinking about it. I've, I've said it's like almost like the cross, right? Where we've been right. obsessed with the right and left, right, you know, between right and wrong. I know Father Turbo's talked about this, but there's also that that up and down dimension, which is truth and let's say deception. And we often are are ignorant or we uh, collapse those two things into one, where truth and right or facts and truth are the same thing. And it's not, I don't think. I think you can be factually wrong, but still be standing in truth. And yes. that's, and that's a, a weird uh, that breaks the dialectic. How did how did AOC put it? <laughs> Emotional, morally, morally mor- factually <laughs> wrong, but morally correct. If we ever get to an AOC friend or Fed, we, the, par- the paradigm <laughs> would really fuck us. But Buck, please go ahead. I think um, one problem <clears throat> in the conspiracy world sometimes is that you start. I mean, I guess in the non-conspiracy world too, but I'm more in the conspiracy world. You start with this with the end result in your mind and then you try to work back and figure out how you get to this theory that's in your head and to compliment adam and the work he's done on 9 11 he doesn't do that and i think that's what's attractive about his work is because he's not saying i started with this whole thing 9 11 was an inside job so therefore george bush knew therefore these couldn't have been planes that were operating correctly blah 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 he's starting with like the facts as he discovers them and ends up at the thing, well, at least the story is not as we're being told. And I think a lot of times, especially with the with the internet and <clears throat> everything's so quick these days, you just find headlines that to prove what you already thought was right. And so as far as narrative goes, I think it's important um, for those of us, well, anyone in these circles, but every everywhere to not get set on the end result. It's like, it's like you start with, I've won the race and then how did I win the race? But you've not even been it. You're not in the race at all. And so I think it's important to not start with, with what you think is the end result and try to work back because you're only going to follow this path that gets you to the thing that you started with your presupposition as, as people like to say. Matt. I'm pondering you're, this. You're cooking, you're cooking on something, I can tell. <laughs> I'm pondering this uh, this dynamic with with Alex, where he has he has how do I work through this? So he has there's so many people that he's inspired 
through his work, through everything that he's done that have, um, I mean, again, it's very much like Trump where, where the, the Trumpers are, the Trumpers are better than Trump. Alex Jones's listeners are better than Alex Jones. Obviously there's a wide sample in there and some of them suck and some of them are terrible. And then some of them are great and awesome, but <clears throat> there's a lot of people who are really indebted to Alex for, you know, like, like, like Buck said for, for waking him up, for getting him, getting his eyes opened to this sort of reality. But it's, but it's like part of the game that, that Alex had to play to get to be where he's able to influence people like that. Just a part of the game was kind of losing his own personality in it. And he, so he had to throw out all this chaff. He had to spray out all of this um, misinformation, but it's like, Sifting through the misinformation is the price you have to pay to get the information. And so like, like someone like, like Adam, his style and his approach is a hundred percent completely necessary. And it's also never going to get the attention of a lot of people. Hmm. So in order to get the attention of a lot of people, you have to be the, the bombastic blowhard that just kind of throws shit at the wall and sees what sticks and then people who have seen that, who actually are the ones who really want the meat of it, then they can find someone like Adam. So it, it, it's, I, I'm trying to decide here, is this, is Alex Jones a net good or is he a net evil? Does he, has he, has he brought, is, is the cost of his celebrity worth the light that he's shined on, on, I guess, pl places people wouldn't normally look for that many, many people? Reminds me of the Tucker Carlson friend of friend we did. Uh, and one thing we noticed with Tucker is that Tucker or his people or his production crew was definitely sifting through the dissident right uh, uh, X and pulling information up. So it suddenly became an information hierarchy. Um, and one of the things when I kind of figured that out, it was realizing that we can be an important part of a hierarchy where we can, we can get information up from the ground and get it up into, uh, you know, I, I started calling them broadcasters. So you have the broadcasting group, which is your Tucker Carlson's, your, your Alex Jones, all, all that stuff who don't have the time or the energy there. They have the, um, the, the will and the ability to put themselves out there with it, with, let's say with an infrastructure that protects them, the daily wire, whoever, you know, uh, but they need information to be, to be fed to them. And it's, who controls the purity of that information? I said this with when we we're talking with Curtis is that all you need is a little bit of, of sewage water in, in, a, in a clean well to, to destroy the, 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 uh, the purity of the, of the water. So you kind of want to get that mainline feed, that mineral water feed up into those producers or, or those broadcasters, sorry, that can get that information out to the most people. And that doesn't have to be us. You know, we can we can fulfill our role within the information hierarchy. We just have to understand where that is. And, you know, for the most of us, I'll speak personally, like I'm willing to put my neck out to a, to a pretty big degree, but there's limits, right? Like, you know, if, if I was threatened by the trillion dollar lawsuit, I would just laugh, <laughs> laugh and cry. I'm like, what do you, please go ahead, try. <laughs> like, I have no money. I uh, like you, you don't get to be, you don't get to be a Tucker Carlson or Alex <laughs> Jones or Tim Pool. Like, like Tucker Carlson, Alex Jones, and Tim Pool are way too busy being Tucker Carlson, Alex Jones, and Tim Pool to entertain every person who's gone and dug, dug through everything and is coming and presenting this to them and saying, hey, this is a big deal. Just by naturally, I mean, I've, I've got my own little piddly little businesses that I'm operating here. And I, I feel like I'm getting pulled every which direction. And I have so many things on my list to do. And I can't even fathom being at the top of an empire like that. And an empire that was built on your personality. So you have to continue to be the face of the empire. You have to be on the day to day doing this sort of thing. Yet you also have to have some way of filtering all the bullshit. So you're going to have to hire people to filter all the bullshit for you. Well, then that depends on the, the quality of your hiring. And are you then able to sift through and make sure you hired all the right people so that they'll go get all the, all the sift through all the bullshit for you. And again, again, Trump, you again, again, Trump parallel. again with the Trump parallel. Again. Yeah. Right. Yes. That was his so biggest it, downfall was that he didn't hire the right people. 
Um, it there's is not- kind of this, there's this thing with celebrity, just the last thing I was going to say, there's this thing about celebrity that it kind of, it's like the thing that gives and takes away. I mean, it's you're on mute. Like, it's you, you have to, you, like, you have to have it. Somebody's, somebody's going to have celebrity and we want to have the good people to have celebrity, but the cost of the people having celebrity is that they get compromised by the consequences of that celebrity. It's like a constant dance you have to play with. Yeah, I would say like that's kind of the thing that would decide, I guess, whether Alex is a net positive or a net negative is, is he directing people to people like uh, Adam or is he directing people away from people like Adam? And that would come down to, again, the quality. Well, that's it. And I guess everyone kind of has to decide, but you could say that, that just like Trump, is he hiring good people? Is he, you know, if you get a booker, the booker's the one deciding whether or not your show is entertaining. Then you could have your your guy who's the equivalent of that for your resources. Are you where are you getting your info? And are, are you if you're hiring good people to find good people, then you'd be a, a net positive. And if and if you have the capability to do that and you're not doing it, then that would put you into the net negative. I think. All we're saying is uh, it's just Alex. Call us. <laughs> we're uh... <laughs> call Adam. Yeah. yeah. When 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 you're, when you're you pay happy. off. A, you're happy you to be Alex Jones there. gatekeepers. Sure. <laughs> Ooh, payment up front though, because <laughs> yeah, I heard he's got some financial troubles coming down the road. Right. <laughs> All right. Uh let's do the horn around before we play the outro. Does any uh we are we good with uh with wrapping everything up? Yeah, good. It's all yes. thumbs. Yes, okay. I think I think uh, we covered it pretty well. Uh, I think so. so. I don't think there's, please, there's left, much left on the table. Uh, Buck, we'll start with you. We'll go around. We'll go around the. We'll go around the group. Final thoughts on Alex Jones. Final thoughts. Uh, <clears throat> I think Matt said it best. I I tend to agree with that. Um, he started out with probably with good intentions, and I think within uh, fallen human nature, sometimes the ego gets the best of you, or you start to get this support structure around you that you start to feel like, well, geez, now this is an income or it's this or that. And I, I can't go back even when I learn new things, which is not a good thing. Um, so when I start out saying I've got nothing bad to say about Alex, that would be a negative thing to say uh, because I do think having seen him early on, he, he did um, have truth as his goal. Uh, and then I do think he became somewhat of a caricature. I appreciate Adam's viewpoints and his work on 9-11 is a tremendously Uh, important because it doesn't like i say start with a result and work its way backwards to try to find facts that only fit that narrative so i appreciate people like him i do think alex at least in my case um influenced some people to continue a a a, i guess for lack of a better phrase righteous path of truth and not trying to get off into some wacky um crazy stuff so I appreciate what he did, and it did, you know, it made an early, uh, impact early in my life. Um, so I've enjoyed this chat, and thank you guys. Matt? What was your verdict, finally? Is he a friend or fed? For me, I say friend. Okay. So I think, I think I've probably explained most of my thoughts on it pretty clearly, especially I'll, I'm just going to sum it up, and I'll say that I think that that Alex Jones – the person is a friend. Alex Jones, the character is a fed and Alex Jones. The person is far less influential than Alex Jones, the character. I also hope that Jay helps him find orthodoxy at some point. Yes. Yep. Right. Jay has a show on Infowars, right? Or he does. He's every uh, Friday. Okay. So that's it. I mean, that's Jay falls into one of those, again, another people, another person that uh, Alex is platforming. That is a, you know, an overall, yeah. sorry, my get me unblocked by Jay Dyer. Here. Get me unblocked by Jay Dyer. And we'll have Jay Dyer on to do Jay Dyer for under fed. I mean, this, Tucker this Carlson thing. also has Orthodox people in his circles that are helping him as well. And I hope that he goes that way as well. As well. Tommy. Okay. The dogs are quiet now. Um, so Pit bulls, friends or feds. They're, they're <laughs> definitely friends. They're my friends. I guess you were yelling. Wow. I thought you were trying to talk before, but you were yelling at the dog. What are you trying to do yeah, to this channel? I, I just don't like don't like up. don't like this channel up that way. Like, yeah, yeah, it's them. Flat Earth was 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 <laughs> way was way less contentious. Well, what 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 <laughs> happened was uh, we we had a couple of uh, feral cats at the yard, and one of them was probably about five months old. So I ended up picking her up 
and uh, she's living upstairs. And so the dogs go ballistic every once in a while when she peeks down the stairs because they still not sure what she is. So she's, she's been here less than a week. So it's, it's just one of those things where they'll eventually introduce each other. Um, but I've, I've, I've been on mute half the show cause my dog's doing the same thing. Yeah. They're, Don't worry about it. They're freaking going nuts out there. And, uh, it's like that every night. Your dog, my dog, I have a dog and a cat and they piss each other off every time I'm alone in the house. So have, I have, guys, to babysit. Have, you, have you guys seen do- Mark's dog? Is it I, I saw it when he cared, when he was holding it earlier. Yeah, yeah. Send me, send me a picture, Mark, and I'll, I'll, po- I'll post it for the for the chat. It was it'll Tommy. Be, that'll picture. be the that's thumbnail. Yeah, yeah. Mark's dog cool. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's um, your verdict, Tommy? Uh, Alex Jones is a Fred. <laughs> um, no, I. You know, I don't. He's a fiend. Yeah, I don't. Many I don't, such cases. I don't pay a whole lot of attention to Alex Jones. Um, and it's not because I think he's a fed. It's just because um, it takes a lot more to be my friend than not be a fed. So I just kind of, I, I, I'll, when he pops up, I might listen to something he has to say. Like uh, I'm kind of a retard, which I find funny. Um, but other than that, I, I don't pay a whole lot of attention to him. I don't think he's useful, um, at least at my stage in litigating truth from fiction so i don't find him useful but he does have a tendency to enlighten people to the uh potential of being anti-establishment which i do find to be a useful trait if that makes any sense adam (laughs) do we need to ask (laughs) I like Matt's description. I think he uh, hit it out the park. Um, See, look, we've, we've, we've moved Adam. We've moved Adam over. But, but I'll give you a degree. more graphic and visual description of what I think Alex Jones is now. <laughs> Alex Jones may have started out as a vibrant young Kate Winslet, but he's turned into Joyce Wildenstein. And for those who don't know Joyce Wildenstein, Google her. <laughs> what Adam that went over my head what's the second question I won't ruin it I don't, I don't even know who the second Sorry, one is but that name gave me the thing fucking broke me <laughs> he much like everyone who delves into the oral conspiracy conspiracy is like drugs you know when you first start out taking weed and your hit of ecstasy, and then all of a sudden you did a thousand pills too much and snort heroin and crack, and you end up looking like one of the characters of The Wire. And Alex Jones, if you look at him now, poetry coming from Alex Jones now is a bloated, distorted character straight out of of the Inferno. And I think um, fucks like a man, feels like a woman. (laughs) <laughs> I, think, I think now he's just basically I don't think he's a friend or a fed I think he's he's in hell hmm. Hmm. only the dry northeast humor could deliver those lines as well as you did Adam that was uh-huh. fucking great yeah. <laughs> alright boys okay, uh, okay wait what, so I still have to know the, the, the Wilderstein is she like the Joyce, old lady on Titanic Joyce Wildenstein if you google her and yeah. you see her, you'll you'll definitely pull the picture up just to show everybody. I have one already just from the name, so I want to see if it matches. Okay. Oh, okay. It, for the, I'll put this up for a vote. I'll put this up for a vote. We didn't get to gay frogs, um, but uh, isn't that our outro? I oh, know we have something else. No, Good. we have two. Uh, we have two possible outros. We have the we have the classic. We have the we, we have the the standby classic, which is uh, oh my God. classic. Oh, no, no, hang on. Or we, or we have the Alex Jones rants as a, uh, as a uh, uh, folk song. I'll put up the group. Which, which, which song do you want us to go out with? The classic. The I've one? heard the folk song one too many times. What okay. was the first one, Jason? Uh, our Frogs. classic, our classic jazz outro. The, uh, oh we'll yeah, that, let's like... do that while we sign off, and then you play the Alex Jones. There you I go. Now we'll say our goodbyes and then we'll do a, a whole song at the end for everybody who just wants to keep listening to this show after of it's done. You should. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very gorilla. much. I'm uh, going to go with friend. 
Thanks, Jay. What? Uh, he's a friend, Your but he's like, matters, no. he's, a, <laughs> he's like, you know, the friend at the bar that like gets too drunk and you're like, oh, I love you because you're such a nice guy, but uh, you got to get in the cab and go. That's it's Alex. more like the friend that starts a fight with five guys and you got to pick up. the Yeah, <laughs> one of those, you know, we have, everybody has that friend. Alex Jones is that friend. Gentlemen, tell us, tell everyone where, where, where they can get you at, uh, Buck. Um, Gutterflow Podcast. Matt. Kingpilled Podcast, YouTube, and uh, Real Kingpilled on Instagram, Twitter, uh, TikTok now as well. Pretty soon there's going to be TikTok. Real Kingpilled TikToks coming. Oh, so, yeah. Matt, we'll we'll have you and Cooper back on. I think uh, in the coming months, uh, coming a few weeks to uh, to uh, talk about your fitness program. In depth, okay. we, uh, we 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 did a little bit of it, but we'll we'll get in depth with it. Uh, Tom, and also, I am ahead. a gorilla. <laughs> <laughs> I am a gorilla. <laughs> I am a gorilla. <laughs> Year zero at the Libertarian Institute. Oh, sir, Adam. <laughs> Thank you for having me on. Um, Adam Kevin Fitzgerald. fucking Cooper on again. Jesus. You can Google, Google my name, Adam Fitzgerald, 911. I come right up. Perfect. Thank Ladies you, and gentlemen, everyone. thank you very much. Uh, gentlemen, if you want to stick around for a bit longer, we'll uh, we'll do the thing. Uh, we'll for a bit. Uh, Smoke Bill Room. Room. Smoke Bill like, Room. We can share. We can yep. Subscribe and share. Thank you. For, thank you, folks. We love you. I'm going to use that gorilla as a bong. I am a gorilla.